making your sound better. All right, so we are now back with another pro tip video. Our fourth pro tip video actually where I'm going to share to you guys some of the mixing tips that I've learned and accumulated from for the past five years as a music producer whether it came from a mixing engineer friend both locally and online producer friend both 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 locally and online artist friends from across the globe or something that I've learned on YouTube or from the master class that I purchased for the past few years as I was learning so as we can see right now we have this vocal right here by Dua Lipa from Dua Lipa it's from her song new rules and i intended to use an already processed one because most of the effects that we're going to talk about today here on this part of the course is time-based effects but first i want to i want to show you guys the approach on how to start your mix so the first thing is that you need to make sure that everything is on tune right? If it's not, if some parts are out of tune, there are two ways that you can you can address that. Number one is you use something that we call pitch correction. Luckily, we have this pitch correction tool here in Apple Studio called Newtone. It's so powerful, it's so articulate, and I use it a lot, especially if I'm using FL Studio. The second one is that we have this thing called the picture. Wait, where's that picture? I think it serves as an auto tune. I think this picture right here can compete with the best auto tune plugins in the world, whether third party or some other auto tune from other DOS. It just depends on how you use it. So that's the first thing that you need to make sure that everything is on the right is on key. Rather, none of them is out of tune because you can just edit that afterwards. So the next thing that you should do is something that we call in the music production realm is the sweep and destroy. So basically sweep and destroy involves an EQ. You should always start with something like this. What the purpose of this is that is to make sure that the production is clean. For example, we have this element right here on the bottom end that doesn't really contribute that much to the song. Then what we can do is we can sweep that out. So for us to know that, we can use this EQ right here or we can you can also use some um some third party ones because I think the third party one namely the fab filter pro q2 is a lot better than this eq right here since it has a lot of features you can solo a certain band you can adjust a certain band precisely you can even adjust it up to 32 decibels right now i think we're only allowed to boost up to 18 decibels but there's a workaround for that so let's let's analyze which frequency doesn't contribute that much so what we can do is we can do a low low pass right here and we'll make it steeper steeper that way so let's let's move this down until we cannot hear some sounds anymore talking in my sleep and my so this one So now since there's not much element on this part of the frequency range, we can now make this one as a high pass filter. So basically we cut out all of this extra frequencies that we don't need. So it would sound like this. Talking in my sleep at night, making my sleep. That's the first thing that you need to do before you compress. You, you always need to EQ out the signal because if you compress and then you EQ it afterwards, then all of the muddy parts will go up as well along with the frequency that you might need for the future use. So here it goes phone you know he's only calling because he's drunk and alone too another tip for eqing is that you need to listen to some parts right you need to um you need to meticulously dissect your sound 
phone, you know, he's only calling. That's why it's called search and destroy. Because if you if you heard some something bad on the frequency range, you can just swoop it out using this EQ. Phone, you know, he's only calling because he's drunk and alone. Two, don't let him in. You like have this. to kick him out again. Three, don't be his friend. You know, you that's it. And then afterwards, he can now apply your compressors. It's either you'll you'll use a third party one or you'll use the the stock plugin inside FL Studio. Now remember that there's nothing really wrong with the stock plugins. I think they're good. There's a workaround for them, and yeah, that's it. But you have to make sure that it sounded good before you apply the time-based effects. So basically, there are a few types of effects here in FL. Right? We have two types of plugin as well: the generator and the effect plugin the gener generator are basically plugins that generate sounds and uh, effects are basically something that can manipulate an audio that can change the way an audio sounds but inside the effects plugin there are a few types by the way we have the dynamic processing plugins effects plugins we also have the time-based effects plugins the time-based effects plugins are the plugins such as um reverb we have distortion, we also have delay. Basically, the effects that manipulates the time, that adds something on the actual audio. So the tip, the tip here in using a time-based effects plugin is that you always put it on an insert, another insert. For example, this is our process vocal. What I can do and what you should always do is you should um, you should route it uh, route it on another insert and this will act as as an effect send right <laughs> now you can dock this one to the left or right depend on it depends on you if you want it dock to the right <laughs> now I can name this reverb oops <laughs> now in this in this insert I can now apply a reverb right and since we are on an FX insert right here we don't need the dry signal we only need the wet signal at a hundred percent because we can just adjust this the advantage of putting a reverb on an FX send is that you can edit it just like how you can edit this entire audio by applying EQs from applying dynamic effects so what you can do is you can just adjust the size, adjust the diffusion. You can you can disregard this for now because we can just use an an, uh, an external EQ for that. For example, this filter right here. So this filter actually edits how the reverb sounds. So you can actually mold how your how your entire production sounds by this. You you're, you'll be more flexible once you uh, approach the mixing like this. So, See? I can boost up some of the high ends for the reverb. Same goes with the delay. So right now, let's set up a delay insert. Let's rename this delay. Let's dock this one to the right. There you go. We have a delay, so we can add a delay plugin here. Delay 2. Oh, we forgot to route it so now the advantage here is you can edit this for example you can filter out you only need the high end for this you can also add reverb for your delay a little bit of reverb That's how it is. Now, I really suggest that you practice this one at home. You can download a, a bunch of practice stems online and you can apply the same approach that we applied on Dual Lipa's voice in this part of the tutorial. So you can also practice recording yourself. Maybe you can record yourself on your phone and you can transfer it on your FL Studio and apply the same thing that we did today. So I wish you good luck and have fun mixing.